Using XML HTTP requests to retrieve data seems more complicated than it needs to be. A simpler solution is the Fetch API, and today we are going to look at using Fetch as a way to grab cryptocurrency data from the site CoinMarketCap. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. There are a lot of sites that provide APIs for retrieving data, but how do you access that data? Fetch provides a great interface for doing that, and we're going to be using it to retrieve crypto data from the site CoinMarketCap. So if you're into cryptocurrencies, this tutorial will be doubly helpful. Now, as I mentioned, there are a lot of sites that provide APIs to access that data. So this will also serve as as an example of how you go about working with those APIs. The process we use on CoinMarketCap is similar to the process you would use on most sites. Now first, let's talk a little bit about Fetch. I think the Fetch API is a simpler way to make HTTP requests for retrieving data. Now, Fetch is defined as part of the window object, not a feature of the JavaScript language. So let's first check and see which browsers support it. So on the site caniuseit.com, we can see which browsers support Fetch. You can see there's no support IE, but all modern browsers, they at least have one version that currently supports Fetch. So take that into account when you're planning to use this as a part of a project. Now, another important thing to say about Fetch is it returns a promise. So if you have not used promises, if you're not familiar with them, I recommend that you view my tutorials on promises first. I'll include a link to the playlist on promises in the description. Now, there are a lot of good sites that can teach you all the ins and outs of Fetch, but I think this is a pretty good site here. What we will be doing with Fetch is pretty basic. I just want you getting started so that you can retrieve data and retrieve data from the site CoinMarketCap, and then you can use those same techniques on other sites if you choose to. Also, you can then come in and learn more about Fetch, or I may do additional tutorials in the future that dive into Fetch in a lot more detail. Here's an example of a Fetch command using promises. And then what I wanted to show on this site is you go down here further and you can see some of the methods that you can use as well. This one here, JSON, will be using with Fetch. What JSON does is it converts the data received in the response, it converts it to a JSON object if that's what it's supposed to be. And so we'll be using that as a part of the work that we'll be doing. Also shows brow browser compatibility down here at the bottom. So a lot of details on Fetch that you can dive into and explore if you choose to. Now, as I mentioned, Fetch is a part of the window object. So if you're using something like Node, how to use Fetch. Well, you can still use Fetch if you choose to. There is a module that will support Fetch for Node. So now I think we've said enough about Fetch. Let's go ahead and dive into our specific problem, which is retrieving data from a site. And the site we're going to be using is CoinMarketCap. Now, CoinMarketCap displays information about a bunch of cryptocurrencies. And they have an API. They have an API that you can use to retrieve the data that you need for individual purposes, whatever you're trying to do with that data. And a lot of sites that provide data like this will provide an API. Sometimes they charge for the API, but usually there is a free version and then you can charge if you need more data. So here we are on CoinMarketCap and I go over to the services and underneath there is professional API. So that's where I want to go. Now on this particular page, this is where we go through the process of getting the API key. If I click on that, it then has me enter some information and 
sign up. It sends an email. I verify that. And then for this particular site, it has this page here. And this page here just contains the key, the API key. Now I need that API key in order to use the API. That's true for many sites. In fact, I haven't found a site that doesn't require an API key. So if you're trying to retrieve data from a particular site, you need to get that key. That key identifies you as a user of that API. And so here's where I retrieve my API key. And that's what I'll be using in the examples we'll be looking at. I'll have that hidden uh, so that someone else can't use it. But that is the API key that I will be using as we interface with CoinMarketCap. Now something else that each site will have is documentation about the API. So I'm going to click on this link and take a look at the documentation. So there's usually a quick start guide. This tells you how to get started retrieving data using the API key. Um, this first example here uses Node.js. Down here, authentication it indicates you can use the key in two ways. You can use it as a part of the custom header, or you can use it as a query string. I will be using the query string method with fetch. You could use this other method as well, if you choose to. Then the documentation will usually give you different HTTP URLs you can access to retrieve different data. In here they're called endpoints. So these are the endpoints we can go to to get different data from CoinMarketCap. And then it even subdivides those down, for example, for cryptocurrency, info, map, listings, latest, market pairs, latest. So there's a lot you can do there. Here on CoinMarketCap, if you click on one of these, it takes you to an example of the type of data you'll retrieve. And you can see this is a JSON object here that we retrieve. Also, it will give you the query parameters. So different query parameters you can enter as a part of your HTTP request to determine what data you retrieve. Now, all of this I'm talking about may be a mystery to you. We're going to look at this. So let's go ahead and start doing that. I did want to show you this the basic process of going through the site and getting access to the information you need to be able to access the data. But now let me jump to Sublime. All right, now I've already entered my key in a different JavaScript file. It's here in app1.js. And I've entered it there because I don't want to display that. I don't want anyone else using that key. So I've hidden it. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at how we would use that key with fetch and with the proper HTTP URLs to retrieve data. So first off, fetch is a very simple command. The only thing you have to provide is a URL. There's a lot of other stuff you could provide, but the only thing you have to provide is a URL. And we could place that just inside the parentheses. And then what it returns is a promise. And we use that promise to access the response from the website. And in that response is the data that we're trying to see. So we want to send it a URL. Well, the way I'm going to choose to do this is I'm going to create my URL as a part of a variable. So let me declare that first. And I'm going to enter the URL I want for this first example. And I'll enter that inside of quotes. Now, where did I get this URL? Well, I got that information from the API documentation. So here's some sample URLs that could be used. And I combine that with the domain and come up with this. This is one of the pieces of data I want to get. I want to just get listings right now, the latest listings from CoinMarketCap. So that's the URL. Now I need to 
add a query string to this. So I'm going to declare another variable, qString, and I'm going to set that equal to, inside of quotes, a question mark. We always begin a query string with a question mark. And then I need to declare the key that allows me to access the data. And so this is the query string parameter that has been designated to do that. So I'm going to concatenate to that the variable I set up that contains my API key. So just like that. Now I want to add some additional query string parameters. And where do I get these from? I have a start one, I have a limit equal to five, and I have a convert equal to USD, which stands for US dollars. Where do I get these from? Well, once again, it's from the site. So the documentation will tell you what kind of parameters you can use to determine the data you're getting back. So what I'm getting now is listings of cryptocurrency. And I want to start with the first one, and I want to get a total of five. I could get 5,000, for example, but I want to keep this small. And then when it talks about currency, I want to convert that to US dollars. And so those are the three parameters that I've chosen to use with this. All right. So there's my two variables, my URL, my main URL, and then the query string. Now let's go ahead and enter fetch. So I'll just concatenate those two together. That will provide the URL that will retrieve data. Now, as I said, fetch returns a promise. And so the way we deal with promises is with the then method. So once again, if you're not familiar with promises, you can refer to my tutorials on promises. Inside of the then method, we, pra we pass a function. And with that function, we're going to grab the response. And we're just going to be very simple about this. Right now, I'm just going to con log to the console the response so you can see what it looks like. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're we're going to need to convert this to JSON data. But right now, let me just show you what we get. So I save that. And let's go ahead and refresh this page and open the console. Here's the response. And you can see that we did definitely get something back from that site. All right, now before that becomes useful to us, we have to convert it to a JSON object. So we use the JSON method to do that. Now this creates a promise as well. So that's why I'm using return here because I want to return the promise that is created. And so now we're converting that to a JSON object and then I use then to act on that return promise to get that JSON object. And what will come in data. And then what are we going to do with that data? Console.log data. And then we'll be able to look at it. All right, let's refresh this again. OK, so we're getting something there. So there we go. That's a simple fetch command. We set up the URL. That's all fetch requires. Obviously, as I said, there are a lot of other things we could do. And you can learn more about that as you dig deeper into fetch. That returns a promise. So we receive the response, and we use the JSON method to convert it to a JSON object. And then we display it to the console. So let's look at what we got displayed now. We basically have data here, and then we have a status. Okay, So in the data, there is an array. And we can see that it is displaying different cryptocurrency data. All right. So I could modify this right here and display the data attribute of this JSON object. If I save that and I refresh, 
Now we're simply getting that array and we can open up that array and see what we have. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bit Bitcoin Cash, and EOS. Those are the ones we're receiving. And there's a lot of information about those. Okay, if I opened up Bitcoin, for example, I can see a lot of information that is provided here. And since this is a JSON object, I can move through that information and grab what I need. So here's the current price. So that's one example of a fetch command on this particular site. Now let's change the URL. Let's just get information about one currency. And so we can change that by instead of doing listings and latest, we change this to info. Now where do I get that URL? Once again from the site. Everything comes from the site. And then since this is different information, I also want to change what we are using here on the query string parameters. And so what, what I'm going to use now is symbol, whoops, I'm going to set that equal to B BTC. So we're getting information just on Bitcoin using the Bitcoin symbol. So if I save this, come out, refresh, now we can see I got all kinds of information on Bitcoin. And these would be places to go and learn about Bitcoin. So there's another URL that I could use on CoinMarketCap. All right, now let's say I wanted to get quotes. Let's do this. Cryptocurrency will change the URL to quotes slash latest. I want to get latest quotes. I need my key. That's already in there in the query string. And then for the symbol, we can do a list of currencies we want quotes on. So let's do Ether, um, Litecoin. Let's do Cardano. Uh, that's probably good. That shows what we're trying to get after here. So let me save that. And let's refresh again. And here's quotes. Three different or four different cryptocurrencies. If we open them up, we can get more information about them. And down here is the quote. Notice it's displayed in... US dollars. So that's the current price of Cardano in US dollars. Now one more change. Let's say I wanted to convert this to something else, something besides US dollars. So there is a convert. Whoops, I didn't put it inside the quotes. There is a convert parameter. And I can convert this to Bitcoin or other currencies. Let's do Norwegian Kroner. If I save that, I left the quote off. Save that. Refresh again. Now if we look at the quote information, it's now being displayed Norwegian Kroner. So that's how much Cardano currently valued at in the Norwegian Kroner. So we've covered a lot here. We've covered fetch and how to use it, the simple basics of fetch. We've covered the process of going to a site and digging into that site in order to use its API to be able to retrieve data and thereby specify the kind of data you want. Now the site we used an example with CoinMarketCap which provides cryptocurrency data. But there are a lot of sites on the internet that are very similar that you just need to dig into and find out what is required to retrieve data from those sites. So hopefully that's been some good information for you. Now before we're done here, please hit the like button. It can help others find this tutorial. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another JavaScript tutorial right away 
or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for full courses and a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.